Cotton Pick and Lip Tower by Ray Conrad. Well, gather around your boomers and listen to me. Just pay attention and you will agree that my skiing story will make you sob just a little. But it seems like every time I come down the hill I run up a sizable doctor bill. I've spent less time on the slopes than in the hospital. Now the social part of skiing, it sounded like a ball, just drinking an autograph and casts and all, and staring at the girls in their skin tight, stretchy pants. Well, I should have left the snow part of skiing alone, anyway. I should have known I was accident prone, and anyways, one winter I took the big chance. Now the big trick skiing I found in a flash is simply to have you a whole lot of cash, cause if you ain't loaded, you might as well stick to chess. If it don't cost a fortune, the skier won't use it, or if he does, he'll break it or lose it. Since I started skiing, my bank account is a mess. Now when I first took up this frigid sport, I had no equipment of the proper sort. I always thought the folks who went out on the snow were mad. And they are, especially the ones that ski in that category soon included me. Getting outfitted to all of the food that I had. Close went to the ski shop and got me a pair of that long handle red flannel underwear, some two layer mittens and a parka with a nylon hood. My sweater alone cost $89, had one of them itchy turtleneck collars, and I got some goggles too so I could see real good. I got shoe treats so the shoes wouldn't curl, knee high knee socks were out of this world, and I got some goggles so the socks, I got some knickers too so the socks would show. Then I got a goat skin wine flask and filled it with corn, I got 97 shoulder patches of every sort, and I sewed them all over my clothes so I looked like a pro. <laughs> kind of boots that the Houston races, they laced up in about nine places. Laced up, it's an old song. My poles are made of bamboo, had a checkered design, a really old song. I got a car top carrier, a fast hat too, and a whole bunch of waxes, and I'm telling you, when the bills arrived, I went clean out of my mind. So I was checking through my equipment list, and I'd seen that skis were an item I'd missed. <laughs> oh, I floated a GI love and went shopping in here. I got a pair of boards with a real deal, aluminum and plastic and case hardened steel that would fit me real good if I stood about seven and foot two. <laughs> yes sir, them skis, these real humdingers, the offset edges ruined all my fingers. I couldn't figure out how to stay right upon my feet. Then somebody said, boy, you need some bindings. And this revelation added to my findings. I went and got me some harnesses I thought was real neat. Then these two little dinguses sitting up in front, getting your shoes, and them was no stunt. The back end was these great long leather straps, remember? Well, they wrapped around your ankle and dug your shin and halfway up a side bone and down again, and they ended in a bowling somewhere in the area of your kneecap. Long thongs. Well, I heard of safety bindings, they sounded bad, and I was sure that, that wasn't what I had, so I went and got me a whole bunch of hospitalization. Which, after all, was done and set, was the only time that I'd used my head, but anyways, I was ready for my ski vacation. To the mountain I gaily went to perform this noble experiment. I enrolled in ski school to learn the Arlberg system. My instructor took me up on a big chairlift and we went up on top of this precipitous cliff and when we got to the summit I commenced to doubt my wisdom. Because you know, that mountain stood clear up in the sky. It must have been about nine billion feet high. And standing up there I stayed it all cool and calm. I said, well, teacher, I'll just walk down. I'm afraid I'm sure a terrible mistake's been made. I'm tired from skiing, going home to my mom. <laughs> says, well, let's not be chicken now. I'll show you how to do the snow plow. You do that right, and soon you'll commence improving. So I copied him right down to a T, and I was doing real handily until I found out that you're supposed to do it while you're moving. <laughs> Well, the next thing that I had to learn is what the teacher he calls a stem turn. Well, you shift your weight and skis will come right around. Well, you shift your weight with a move so sure and skis kept going right the way they were and invariably I'd end up sitting down on the ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the page. Maneuver that I had to learn is what the teacher he called 
stand and turn, keep your feet together, you can go a little bit faster. Then shove one foot up, slow you down, shift your weight again, come turn around and nine times out of ten, you got a terrible disaster. Well, I was working on stem, and when I had a sudden chill, the teacher says, follow me down this hill. And then you right off, he'd leave me up there alone if I didn't do it. So away we went, just him and me, till he made turn around this big old tree, and unfortunately, I attempted to go right through it. <laughs> the direct result of this did traction was to spend the last four months in traction. As far as I know, that tree wasn't injured a bit. And I mused as I hobbled around on my crutches, I'd have to react quicker in the clutches or find something softer than a sugar pie to hit. Well, back. Next winter, I was back in the skis, stemming down the mountain, avoiding the trees, and between the sits marks, my tracks was getting kind of twisty. Well, teacher, he says, this will be tougher in hell, but I'll try to teach you to ski parallel. He shoved me a little, I can let it call me Christy. Well, it bites up and down, all your way, then you lean way forward, and if everything goes well, you describe a beautiful art. Well, you know, I guess I'm left to rotate with too much power, and that's a hell of a place to put a lift tower! <laughs> and anyways, suddenly everything got awful dark. <laughs> well, now the ski patrol got me out of there fast. In five months, I was down the walking cast. Read a lot of ski books, made a promise song. I figured I'd go back with the first good snow. Old teacher, he winced and said, oh no, when I told him that I'd like to learn to do some slalom. <laughs> But I made complete and he said, okay, and went to the slalom hill one fine day, and you know, I had to realize that it was quite that steep. So I called, shivered, started to leave, and the teacher grabs me by the sleeve, and he says, now or never, but first, pay up, you creep. <laughs> he says, you know, there ain't really much to do. The little flags are stuck there two by two. You just go between them, and I says, do I indeed? They smiled and said, now have a nice ride. And old buggery pushed me over the side and I approached the first gate at a blinding rate of speed. I'm going to hit the first gate a little wrong. I reckon I had a flag in each hand when I got to the second. And from there on, I picked the chorus as clean as a whistle. <laughs> Soon, I had more flags than the whole UN in there. It's that time picking left tower coming again. <laughs> and I hit it like a runaway guy to the <laughs> Injuries in turn were made page one of the medical journal. The doctor said how I ever survived was a mystery. A little book that dealt with my affliction got pulled a surprise for fantastic fiction, but it's just a simple fact in my case history. I still wasn't sound, so I thought I'd go west and just look around. Cause the fella can't get hurt looking, so I thought. I figured I'd go out to the old ski place, do a little bit of drink, and watch the race and save my strength for next year, just like I ought. So I was watching this race up on the hill, top of a mobile looking down the hill, when somebody pointed and said, just look at that fella. So I spun around so I could see in the back of my legs got crossed and I heard this. A spiral fracture clean up through the patella. Well, naturally I fell down into the gate and this racer he come by like a runaway freight and I he spotted me there at Robo and down on the ground. And then he tried to go into me this kind-hearted kid, but I wish he hadn't stuck his poles where he did it has me lately whenever I go to sit down. <laughs> now ski patrol peeled me up off the track, laid me on a toboggan, flat my back, then down the hill, and started just to go like sin. So I went and I had a nice little rest for about nine months while I convalesced. When I come out of the coma, I found that my courage had faltered. I'd had so many injuries of every sport I was ready for some less lethal sport where my anatomy would not be quite so frequently altered. <laughs> Sounds like a nice quiet game. Maybe parachute jumping.
up and is sufficiently tame, maybe riding them wild horses would be a bit merrier. But whatever it is, folks, it's bound to please, as long as it don't need to be done on skis. Where there's no lift towers in the immediate vicinity, 